Alrighty. Hello. Is this thing on? Can you hear me? <laughs> it is on. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to our weekly Knox Talks here at the Equinox Performance Center in Oklahoma City. Uh, I am your host this Thursday, Ariel Ari Panda West, Director of Communications and Community here at Equinox. And honestly, we have like a full squad today. So you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, dude. I appreciate you. You're not boring. <laughs> You're not boring. Oh, Chris. Oh, no. Oh, no. Weird merch. Weird. I've never even heard of this merch. Wow. It feels so nice. Oh, hey. Yeah, thanks. This is my tattoo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Toxic. Uh. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Congrats on your Arby's, dude. Wait, wait, wait. Time out. Time out. Everyone pause. Wait. So you guys, you cannot hear anyone else in the Discord call. <sighs> Why not, though? Gosh dang it. Why is it always something? Let me look. The desktop audio is on. Hold on. Hold on. It's on. Top audio. Gotta love technology. Okay, so these are the Arctic. There it is. Wait, I it's can on. hear it okay, over the stream. There it is. Do we yeah. get, do we, get we, can hear now. we can hear it now. Okay, everyone can hear it. Cool. I had to change the, uh, the output to the Arctic because it was set to... Default. Yeah, I don't know. Lots of Sorry, lame. guys. Well, now everyone has to start over. Introduce yourselves again. Maybe like a little less detailed. But y'all, um, sorry you missed Connor's RV story. Maybe he'll re retell it. I can retell it. But Chris, you you go ahead, introduce yourself, and then I'll <laughs> I'll talk about Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm Chris, um, also known as Neighbor. Uh, I'm the director of content. And I help make the streams look pretty. Yay. We appreciate you. Again. Cool. My name is Connor Goopy Canoopy. I, I I said before that I had to get something off my chest to chat, and so I feel like I didn't really get to confess publicly, so I, I'll still do that. Uh, I went to Arby's at 10.30 a.m., and they, they open at 11. They still serve me, and I got you know my number 16 classic roast beef for six bucks and uh it was every bite of it was amazing so shout out to arby's on i don't know like macarthur mm, yeah. oklahoma city y'all are the realist i hope you're all watching uh shout out to arby's arby's a1 uh that's it s tier customer service that's that was it sponsorship win sponsorship yep. win <laughs> the Red Bull are, they, are they bringing a big giant check to us after this? I mean, that would be pretty cool. Uh, I mean, yeah, they, they better after all that free publicity. <laughs> yeah. God. <laughs> and I'm Chad uh, Ford. I, I help out around here. Um, Knox Father has the handle. Yeah. He's, he's the Excited boss, to be on guys. stream. Talk to you guys today. Have a wonderful time. It's going to be great. Is Scott in here? Or is he just lurking? Uh, he's actually in the shadows. He's gonna, he's gonna mute. 
Okay, well, that's lame. We're in the same room, and it's like we don't want to deal with the echo. That makes. Sense. I, I can I can do Scott's intro then. Hey guys, I'm Scotty G. I, uh, Scotty G here. <laughs> I uh, can eat really hot food, and it doesn't do anything to me. I'm kind of like a mutant yeah. in that way. So uh, yeah, baseball cards and uh, Equinox. Scotty G, treble. Yeah. I mean, I'm you telling know... you that was. Probably the best impersonation of Scott I've ever heard. It wasn't. It wasn't that far off. I'm not gonna lie. It wasn't that far off. Um, okay. Well, thank you guys for introducing yourselves uh, again. My name is Ari Panda, and this is Knox Talks. If you're joining us for the first time, uh, Knox Talks is our weekly talk show here with the Equinox staff uh, here in the Equinox Performance Center, Oklahoma City. And so, basically, this is just our little casual stream. We talk. A little bit about things going on here at Equinox, uh, plans for the future. Um, we try to drop some like cool little insider info here and there. Um, and then the second half of the show, after we take like a quick five to ten minute break, uh, we come back and we talk about esports news going around in the scene. Um, so Connor and I will be heading that portion uh, pretty in depth. Um, but. First, we're going to jump into some team fight tactics uh, as our first yeah. game of the day. Um, team fight tactics is a Riot Games title. If you guys are not familiar, um, we played on stream a lot. Uh, it's it's a very easy. It's an easy game. game to play to. Yeah, right. Like it's easy yeah. to like be able to converse and talk with you guys. Um, Without like, because if I if I play league, like I'm like way too competitive and way too in depth, and then like I just kind of ignore chat, and I don't want to do that to you guys, because we got a lot of cool stuff to talk about. So, so nice no ignoring the chat, it's not allowed. Connor followed me on Twitter. Have I made it? I think you have made it if you get a follow from the Goopy Canoopy. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. It, it's an elite grouping of people. Uh, <laughs> it's a very exclusive club. Right. There's I only can tell a... you who's not giving. Gooby Canoopy a follow is Scott after that introduction. <gasps> yeah, let me. I don't think he even is following me. That guy probably wait. Wouldn't. Is he not following you on Twitter? That's toxic. Uh, he follows me. Follows me. Oh, yeah, yeah, I follow you, Connor. So you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you like continue that voice anytime you impersonate Scott? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start the queue. Um, Let's do it. But as we're in queue, I wanted to go ahead and jump into like what's new at Equinox. So we have a couple of things coming up. Um, but really right now, we're just kind of getting ready for the new year. Uh, building out some pretty cool content. Uh, we got some competitions. Oh my gosh, my mouse. Okay, there we go. We have some competitions coming up for the Valorant team. Um, if you guys missed the news last Friday, and then um, I've mentioned it a couple times on our socials this week, uh, we have acquired Smashcade. Woo! Yay! We got uh, Smashcade going on tomorrow. We do. Or excuse me, Saturday. Friday, Saturday. 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 Um, okay, so for those of you who don't know what Smashcade is, um, so Super Smash Brothers Ultimate is actually a pretty big game here in the state of Oklahoma. Like we have a huge community of uh, gamers here that, you know, usually they have to travel across state lines to go to a lot of these tournaments. Um, Far and wide. Right. Like, you know, I, I even had one of my Super Smash friends travel all the way to Minnesota for a competition. So Ooh, Minnesota. <laughs> So Smashcade is our local Super Smash Brothers Ultimate tournament here in the state. And we host those monthly. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID, they have moved fully online uh, for basically until COVID is over. <laughs> um, yeah. But we're hosting on, our vaccine. first one this Saturday. So that's going to be really exciting. Uh, I'm going to be hosting the pre-show and with Connor and Scott. So we have some really cool content, fun um, oh yeah fun ideas in the works for you guys um yeah so if you play super smash you should definitely tune in um, or enter i mean everything yeah, yeah come on totally. enter we got a little bit bigger prize pool this month yeah Why not? trying to attract some players it's going to be a little yep, yep. little holiday bonus for you if you win you know everybody needs some extra bucks around christmas oh yeah yeah there is a 250 dollar uh prize pool so 
Yeah, if you think you're if you think you can compete in the Super Smash, even if you're not from Oklahoma, that's like the cool thing about it being online now is that like you could be anywhere in this the North America and compete. So Yeah. And and the pre show, I mean, there's a high percentage chance that I am gonna like slap Scott with like a live fish or you know, chug a bottle of maple syrup or something. So like you're gonna wanna be there. Wait, for that, maple I mean, syrup. Wait, wait, wait. I did not agree to maple syrup. What's going on with the maple syrup thing? Yeah, I mean, who knows? There might be some surprises there that even you don't know about. Who knows? Who knows what I've got up my sleeves for the pre-show? You know, there's there's no way to elicit a, a realistic surprise reaction other than to just actually surprise someone. So uh, we'll mean, see. That's some that's some valid sound logic. <laughs> <laughs> can't well, can't uh, argue with that. Those those of us in production would appreciate a heads up. We have to some plastic over our cabling and headset. Yeah, it's true. They might suspect it, but you're probably right. So yeah, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be super fun. I think what Ariel said is exactly right about uh, you know taking Smash Cane online for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like this was a, this was a cool opportunity for us to pivot, reach a larger audience, kind of show that we are still committed to the Smash scene, even if we can't do locals. Right. Um, it's also just like. Like everyone in the world, we're just very committed to being safe right now and, and taking this cautiously and playing it the right way. So um, that's a lot of the heart behind the decision. And I mean, we're, we're very excited to get back to locals. Don't get us wrong. Yes. But, you know, we fully understand that you just got to wait for the right time. Yo, thanks for the follow. Is it Dova? Can I just call you Dova? Thanks for the follow, dude. Appreciate you. Man, that that got track. People following out there. I know that track was bumping. Oh my gosh, here we go again. Oh, I gotta turn my <laughs> ninja pickle. Thanks for the follow. Wait, you weren't following us already? Mm, sus, sus. You're one of our sus. Well, he's one of our frequent chatters in like the community I know. Discord. So I was like, hmm. Wait a second. What are you doing? Just ninja, following ninja's us? always hanging out. That's okay, dude. Thanks for the follow. We appreciate you. Ninja's so stealth, you don't even know he's following you when he's following you. He That's says, true. He, Guy's he so fake stealthy. Fan. Fake fan. Yeah. That's fine. We got anybody in the chat that's played Cyberpunk yet? Oh, yeah, guys. Oh, oh, so tell us. Super unfortunate. Um, we were going to actually play some Cyberpunk on stream, but we couldn't get the Xbox input to work on OBS. So, super Rip. unfortunate. Um, we were going to, like, go through the entire... Okay, so I'm, like, a huge character customization type person. Oh, dang it. Of course I lose. Uh, let's just, like, go in on money. Um, I'm huge into character creation, so we were going to work with you guys in the chat, and we were going to create, like, the Equinox cyberpunk character. So you guys would have had some input on like what hairstyle we went with and what we looked like, but unfortunately couldn't get the input to work. So here we are. That's okay. Are we gonna be able to get the input to work yeah, like we're, next we'll week? We'll work on it. We'll okay. On Hopefully it, next uh, week. Cool. Yeah. We're done yeah, that'll be cool. Filming. Next week with the mayor. Uh, next week with Cyberpunk creating. <laughs> 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 Wait a second. Chad's over here trying to leak all of our stuff before. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My fault. <laughs> all, all we're saying, chat, is that if you're, if you, you know, you should tune into Knox Talks next week. It's going to be a pretty, you know, Unique I don't know. It's going to be, I'm trying to think of a word that, hmm. It'll be. Is it S tier? Will it be It'll be S tier. It'll be S, we'll it'll be S tier. That's fine. It it'll be S tier. Be. It'll be S tier. Uh, it's gonna get you political up in here. Yeah. How's TFP going? Are you guys uh, you guys winning on this thing? Um, I am. I just want. I'm on a two game win streak. I'm going for a little bit more of an early game comp. Okay, uh, so you're going for your win streak early as opposed to the econ route of losing. Yes, yes, that is me. That is me right okay. now. In a nutshell. And Ari Panda, are you? Uh, what? What? What's your? What's your strategy here? So technically, I'm losing, but I'm I'm going for an econ route. So like, okay. I, I'm trying to just get money quick. So right. Yep. In TFT, yep. you want to have your gold in multiples of ten, so yep. uh, to get more return uh, the next round. So I'm just chilling okay. at a solid twenty gold right now, and it's okay if I lose. 
Man, look at you. Fancy. Solid 20 gold. One more thing uh, Equinox has got coming up, kind of on the competition side, is our Valorant team is competing this month. Um, yes, we are. I'm not sure that it's been officially announced yet, but you can get a Nox Talks exclusive here that we will be competing in the Pittsburgh Knights Invitational on the 19th and 20th, I believe. I believe so. Um, and so that'll be that'll be really exciting. Um, Pittsburgh Knights are obviously an org out of Pittsburgh, partnering with the Steelers, so it's cool to see them, you know, uh, getting orgs involved that are also kind of trying to represent cities and, and do those kinds of things. So all good, all love. Very exciting. Very exciting. Excited Hopefully to compete, though. Thunder want to partner with us one time. Seriously, Sam Presti, if you're listening, come on, dude. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Re Really. <laughs> uh, Koji in chat says the Pittsburgh Knights. Who's going to be the better black and gold organization? Seriously, Ooh. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good question. <laughs> How is that even a question? I mean, Come it's on. not it's a question. Good. I mean, you got to check the jersey, guys. Yeah. Come on. Just saying. You already know. You already know. We are the the ranked number twelve in North America team. Okay. It was also Genji. One blade. One blade. I don't know. Not not twelve. Not twelve. Not 12. You know who else is number 12? Tom Brady. He oh, might yeah. be the greatest of all time. The GOAT. Uh, you know. Oh, it, it sounds like <laughs> Wait, what? Not a fan of Tom okay, Brady. okay, okay. So I am not a fan of Tom Brady, like, at all. Like, 0%. Okay. Um, really? Okay, so here was my philosophy. Like, I grew up, I was born in Illinois, but I was, like, on the, like, southeast border of, like, Illinois and Indiana. So I'm an Indianapolis Peyton Manning. fan. I was so like, oh, my oh my god <laughs> i was a huge what? peyton manning fan like he came oh to, my god it was my junior year in college i think and peyton manning came to speak at oklahoma state university and i sat in the very front row and cried as he walked across the stage so <laughs> oh my god i was like, i will say <laughs> the, the colts iteration with him and marvin harrison yes. and reggie wayne oh my god and dwight like, freeney yeah, yeah that yeah. like the 2006 to early 2000s. 2000s. Yes, dude. Well, when we went to the Super Bowl against the Bears, guy, right? <laughs> Wait, what? The Bears. I don't, like Marvin Harrison got charged with murder. <laughs> Wait, did he? <laughs> okay, yes. well, not not back no then. Way. <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. Did he really kill somebody? This is like me finding out that Sammy Sosa did steroids or something. <laughs> like, no, no way. Yeah, he got charged in connection with like a gang murder. No, Dude, they did bloody. like a whole thirty for thirty about like what? I'm not sure if it was an exact thirty for thirty, but like the downfall of Marvin Harrison, like one of the oh greatest NFL God. wide receivers no. ever, and no. to be charged with murder and Wait, finding what? out was, like, connected to drug rude. rings and gangster. Oh, rings. you're right. Oh, I'm on his. I'm on his wiki right now. It's it's bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's bad. It's what? He was like one of my favorite players of all time. No. Oh. <laughs> Oh, no, my no. I wonder if we're going to get a cease and desist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, dude. That's actually I'm tragic. sorry to ruin your childhood dreams. No, it's, hey, you know, ignorance is bliss, but better I know. Better I know True. this, you know. Oh, my God. That's so unfortunate. Okay, well. Yeah, it's pretty soul crushing. He who shall not be named was is not my favorite player. <laughs> <laughs> the forbidden one. Gosh. Dude. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. That's that's not funny. It's it's horrible. But it's uh, horrible, but it's wild. <laughs> wild. Goodness. Sheesh. Uh, well, Reggie Wayne was the goat then. Reggie Wayne. Go, Don't forget. Go, there you go. Uh, Adam Terry. <laughs> dude, dude could play. He could freaking kick a ball, dude. Robert Mathis, Dwight Freeney. Yeah. Come on. I was there for it. Yeah. Sitting next to Scott, and he's saying Ed Edger and James. Edger and James. Oh my gosh. Yeah, dude. Good boy. Back in the day. Dude could run. He could run. Man, what a. I didn't expect this level of, like, me, you know, heftiness me. thrust upon me. Yeah. Start that, of the was, stream. that was kind of um, heavy. That was kind of heavy, so I'm going to shake it off uh, with... Yeah, shake it off. <laughs> shake have... it off. <laughs> shake it off. Uh, no. Um, we have <laughs> we have a super... I, I don't want to, like, give away too many details, but we have a really cool, like, holiday video coming out soon. Oh. TM. So just keep an eye out for that on the socials. Festive. 
Oh, oh I like Ro God. Roger said that entire conversation was a roller coaster. Yeah, no, for me too, dude. For me Dang too. right, yeah. They had no idea. <laughs> I'm just dropping knowledge like nobody's business on them. Seriously, dude. I'm not ready for this knowledge. <clears throat> that was honestly yeah. like when I found out that Mark McGuire had like done steroids or Sammy Sosa. Like that was that was on no, on that, that level. Was it, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was. That's unlucky. It's yeah. kind of one of those things that, uh, like, obviously you you grow up and you 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 idolize your sports stars growing right. up, right? Your athletes right. and whatnot. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you 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 become mature and you learn about their lifestyle and you're like, whoa, <laughs> these are bad people. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what happened here? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's basically what just happened. Oh, I do not need to hey, have a Connor. Comedian. So what's up? Cool story, bro. Have you ever heard of the guy named Tiger Woods? Oh no. Like, <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> what I understand, he cheated on his wife. <laughs> oh. Wait. Man, I I would bet that if 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 he would have done that, you know, there would have been something with chasing after someone with a with a golf club. Just yeah, there, just there just might have been. So spitballing. I'm just I'm just opening your eyes to what's yeah. out there. If we need to, if we need to do a stream just dedicated to revealing like prominent athletes' dirty laundry, I think that could be educational. Golly, we gotta, we, we gotta educate our fans. We would get sued so many times. <laughs> <laughs> we just rename this stream, you know, Barstool Esports or TMZ. Yeah. <laughs> Barstool yep, yep. Esports. <laughs> TM Barstool Esports. Esports. Yes, TMZ oh, Esports. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. Oh man. All right. Okay. What what scandals are going on outside of sexual harassment with executives? Yeah, in the esports <laughs> world right now, like, <laughs> um, there aren't really many scandals going on in esports right now, thankfully. Um, unless wow, um, actually, I don't want to get on get in that one on stream, but um, maybe like the free melee stuff, but even that's like yeah. starting to kind of yeah, yeah that's way. not as bad, I guess you would say. Yeah, that's yeah like it's a, it's that's a different that's kind of bad. It's yeah. a different category. <laughs> so what at the heart of the whole free melee thing, like what is what's the issues? I mean, basically well, Nintendo like doesn't want, you know, third parties to be making money off their product, which I get, but at the same time yeah. like, Nintendo doesn't like provide any sort of infrastructure for its tournament scene. So, yeah, like the the Smash Brothers and that's what we're doing and right. all that good stuff. Okay. Yeah, at the heart of it, that's that's really what it is. Um, you know, I think like the thing with Big House and all that was kind of like, it's a catalyst event that mm -hmm. is really just pointing out something bigger that's going on. It seems like yeah, and, and they're gonna pick the the biggest guy in the room and start throwing rocks. Yeah, and so Nintendo is just always Nintendo is kind of like Valve. I don't want to just talk trash on developers right now, but both developers have have a sort of history of. You know, not being the most in touch with their community and maybe not, um, you know, investing in the things that they, they their community wants them to invest in. Those yep. those kinds of issues. So, yeah. Always unfortunate, but just the way it is. Wasn't that the re there we go. All right, we'll bring up something that uh, when we asked on Twitter what uh, what people wanted to talk about. Oh, yeah. um, one of the questions we got was just about the performance center. So. Um, we can all kind of talk on this kind of roundtable, but sure. um, you know, like basically, I'll just quickly explain what our performance center is. So, uh, if you if you are an OKC local, this is very exciting for you, and kind of one of the things that does make us like an Oklahoma City org. And this is a um, six thousand square foot space in northern Oklahoma City mm -hmm. that is dedicated to um. You know, essentially elevating local esports athletes. You know, so the the half of our building, OU, came by and did a really cool tour of it. Did some interviews along the way. We've posted some pictures, but um, so people have kind of gotten a, a, a glimpse into what it looks like. But um, essentially, it's it's two rooms that we are functioning as team rooms that have six computers in the each, all top of the line and, and outfitted to compete at the highest level in any game. And then two individual coaching rooms that are kind of more for private coaching. Two computers in each. Um, a streaming room that, again, is where Ariel is currently sitting. And then a, a production room in the back 
where kind of our brain computer is and then a, a casting kind of utility conference everything room in the middle we've used for watch parties bigger productions shout casting those kinds of things so you know when we think of when we talk about the performance center it really is at its heart a tv studio mm -hmm. you know kind of half tv studio half and a, a place where people can come and get better at their games or compete or whatever it may be so you know um, think of like a local you know high school gym that's focused on skills and uh you know team creation for mm -hmm. you know like basketball or something like that or you know three dedicated tennis courts that have specialized skills and coaching and all that good stuff available to them yeah and chad you made this comparison a lot kind of talk about the the aau versus nysa or not nysa like a ymca uh <laughs> talk about that comparison a little bit yeah um so you know when we set out to do this um look i i i love local gamers um and all that good stuff but you know what we're trying to do is really cause a separation or an idea that gaming and esports is kind of different you know you have different levels like you know for kids that are starting out in the six seven year old time frame and they go to their local y and play you know they play for exercise or whatnot um and they're playing to learn the game and then you know when they get older in high school and they actually really have a passion for it mm -hmm. and their parents want to start investing um in their kids time and what they're doing and really sit there and explore the idea right of you know 11 12 13 years old that they want to do this for a living at least they want to do it to try and put themselves through college and that's yeah. what we're investing in is that highly skilled um esports athlete and don't get us wrong we're gonna we're, we're trying to create a community uh quote unquote of gamers but we we at the heart of it we're really trying to be here in oklahoma city and give um everybody an opportunity to see what their skill set is uh mm -hmm. on the highest level right you know we got a number 12 ranked valorant team in north america right now and mm -hmm. trying to invest a little bit more time energy in them to get them over the hump and maybe be a championship caliber team uh when we look at 2021 um on down the line and so that's what we're trying to be is an organization that doesn't have you know retro gaming with hey you put a dollar's worth of quarters in the machine and you can play for two and three hours at a time like that, that that's fine you know and and that's a great business plan for but for us it's more about the the high-end esports athlete and how do we get them better on the national stage true yeah and that, i i think at, at its core that's a lot of what chad mentioned is the distinction between gaming and the distinction between that and, and esports i think that's a, a really pivotal part of of kind of embodying what we are is making that distinction and and also like <clears throat> like so much of what i think equinox will do and what i hope other other orgs like us sprawl up throughout cities in the country like uh you know kansas city pioneers exist pittsburgh knights exist mm -hmm. you have obviously phase in atlanta envy in dallas i hope i hope this continues to be a trend because what it does is it gives a lot of people uh, a place where they do belong and a place where they can you know play with friends um, and have people who are like-minded to them. Cause a lot of these kids grew up with parents who just grew up in a different generation where they weren't exposed to gaming like they were. So they just, they're kind of working with a different set of cards. Yeah. And we, you know, I think it's really cool to start thinking about how, you know, they can come to a facility like this. Um, if we're, if we're coaching someone like, like shout out to McLeod when he comes in, you know, he's, he's greeted by a staff of people who, you know, think a lot the same as him on some things. Like, you know, he can just talk about all oh, the new Valorant gun line looks really cool. And we're like, yeah, it does. Like, he can't say that to maybe any other person. So right. uh, at its core, that's a really cool part of what we're doing as well. Yeah. And let's be honest, like when you're when you're growing up, you know, in these situations, like you start out with local kind of communities to where, hey, you're going over to your buddy's house and you're playing games all night. Hell, that's that's how I grew up is going going over to Buddy's house, making queso. We're playing Tony Hawk Pro Skater all night. Yo. Whatever the game. Amazing. Nice game. <laughs> I like that. But then, but then it's, uh, you know, how do you do it beyond that? Well, let's, let's be honest. Like, you might be your best player in your high school, but where do you go from there? Right. And that's what we're trying to, yeah. trying to connect, hey, some of the best people in the state with each other 
um, and really cultivate esports through competition and content and um, just educating parents about, hey, there's actually jobs in this. You know, we need production engineers, we need sound engineers, uh, yeah. we need videographers, we need uh, video editors, you need shoutcasters, uh, you need content creators. And those are some of the most sought after jobs right now for the, I guess you would say, Generation Z and millennials. Um, and so that's what we're we're investing in and we're being open armed and accepting to that um, situation that there is a two whole generations out there that this is what they want to dedicate their lives to. And mm -hmm. hey, that's that's kind of what we're dedicating our life to right now. Yeah, I like it. Agree. Hard agree. All right. Especially, what do I especially need to do? here in the Midwest. Like, I think that's like, yeah, that's like why we're pretty uniquely positioned as Equinox because, like, here in the Midwest, like, esports really, I mean, it's, it is starting to like get a foothold and it is starting to kind of take off. You know, you have colleges yeah. like Maryville, you know, placing in the top three for League of Legends collegiate competition every year now. Uh, yeah. Yep. So, and, I, and that's what we want to do. You know, obviously, any investments in time and if, if anybody, realizes kind of the shape of technology it's usually done mm -hmm. um it's done out on the coast to right. start with yep. um and then it's going to come inward um and that's kind of where we're at is you've got everything going on in um new york la and all that but there's nothing really going on here in oklahoma nebraska colorado yeah. kansas right. and we're aiming to kind of be that for people yeah I think that's exactly it. I think, you know, this is something as well, you know, plug for next week that we're probably going to talk about more in the future. You know, like this isn't this isn't just kind of an idea that we have and, and it exists in the background. Like this is something we want to. Do you think we'll be to... talking about the modern frontier? I, you know, that's a really good way to put it. I think the modern frontier is a great kind of catchphrase for what we might be trying to do and talking about so yeah mm, could be could be eyes eye emojis um eye emojis yeah so i think you know we you know we don't want to just talk about the stuff we want to uh also just do thing like you know back it up with actions so mm -hmm. we hope we can do that hold us accountable chat make sure we're doing it all right i just got nine cultists by the way so that's pretty cool yeah uh... my team's good now my team. How, uh, let, let's get an update on the TFT. Like, uh, where are we at? Uh, oh, usually, you know. the lobby starts with eight, correct? Yep. Ariel's uh, in seventh, and I'm in first. Ariel is the only person that's beat me in the lobby, though. So, that's yeah, something. But um, yeah. All right. What are what are the health updates? I'm like very about to die. Like very much. She's yeah. She's she's 19. And I'm 91. So oh, that's where we stand. Oh, that is a big discrepancy. A little uh -huh, bit. Uh -huh. Connor, if off stream you'd like to talk about maybe furthering your esports career, um, <laughs> here at Equinox would love to discuss oh. the options with okay. you. Okay, that's great. That'd be great. I, like I said, you know, this is a game I think I could really take it to the next level. And so, right. you know, thanks for the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we say that. And then we also have a player on our Valorant team that it's yeah, pretty it's, it's dang good. Actually, at yeah. He's pretty good. Oh, and we, didn't, we didn't know that until we started playing with it last week, we right? No idea. That, yeah, that it was. Said, we're like, whoa. Yeah. Okay, I need to. I need to do some things. I need to use some I items. I don't. Know I played this. Go ahead. I just don't know what to do. Like, I'm kind of stuck. Are you mentally boomed right now? That's I what just it sounds like, like. I don't think anything I do is like going to make a difference at this point. Ah. Uh, that's pretty bleak. You feel, you feel hopeless. A little bit. I mean, I just won somehow. <laughs> Maybe I should throw blue buff on my Jan. I keep, I keep not being able to kill this Xin Zhao. He is just really annoying. God. Maybe Whatever. Whatever. I played this game. Xin Zhao. I think is how you say his name. Xin Zhao. Xin Zhao. I played this game almost like completely opposite of how I usually play games. So okay. that's something. So how, do I, usually, like, yeah, how do you usually approach the game and what's different about it from here? I usually do a lot of what we talked about and take the first couple rounds to kind of really decide what I want to do. Oh, and, yeah, you always do econ. 
yeah and this game i decided in the first turn what i was going to play because there was a, a chosen uh, unit on my board which just means they're immediately level two had a trade i wanted that's that's really good and just kind of decided immediately what i was going to play off of that so yeah um, that's, that's fine i mean it's like yeah. you can't in strategy every time right. yeah you know. yeah and this is working for me so i might uh might have to and switch that's another thing that we feel we can bring to the table is you know at the performance center if you feel stuck in a, a certain situation where mm. you're playing the game the entire time and you just need you know other ideas about whether coaching whatever the case may be and uh different analytics associated with the games because analytics have become a huge part of gaming as it is you know we talk all the time about you know, whatever it is, just like you're saying, um, Connor, like, well, you know, statistically, the odds say that I should play econ or whatever it is. Sure, sure, PFP, sure. Unless you get that second level um, type piece to take you over the top. You know, yeah. for instance, you know, you talk about call it Fortnite. Well, the odds say you should play, you know, a green tactical shotgun over call it a pump, whatever, mm -hmm. unless yeah. you get to the purple pump. Um, and you know yeah, how you yeah. play that and how your strategy becomes different just of uh, the different weapons that you possess and how you're going to move forward playing those games. Yeah, I think that's and that's when I've talked to our Valorant players a little bit, you know, and this is Valorant's a great game where this is a good example. CSGO is very much like this, you know, as well as games like TFT. This, this applies to just about every game. Um, so much of being a good player, like a top 1% player isn't just like having the skills to do it. It's understanding what what fights to take and what fights not to take, what situations to opt, in, opt into versus not. Yeah. And so much of that is understanding the percentage chance you have to win those engagements. Um, yeah. And Valorant, you know, a great example of this is, you know, what points you're going to hold, you know, like what corners you're going to try and take, like what, what sites you want to fight on and hold versus what ones you want to retake, uh, how you want to win pistol rounds. Like those are all things that, if you're playing at the highest level, you're you're playing a percentage game, truthfully, and and teams that aren't, I think, are at a disadvantage if they're not thinking about it that way. So yeah, and if you think about professional sports as it is, it's all about matchups, especially when you get into the team side. Um, any situation is what matchup is your strongest against kind of their weakest, and where are you going to play a set chess piece that they won't play? You know, yeah. and how to how to put that in position. Speaking yeah. of which, if you guys have ever watched The Queen's Gambit on Netflix, it is a fantastic <sighs> series. I, still Man, I need to. It. Yeah, it's just a mini series. I think it's just seven episodes long, or like seven hour long episodes, but it's it's good. And it's I'm interesting gonna... to see, you know, how, you know, kids grow up with special talents and right, all that yeah. Kind of stuff. Yeah, I've got a friend that's really into to chess and uh, he's he's been in chat a few times. Nick Nasty, if he's ever in chat, that's who he is. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I don't know if he's here right now, but he's also a top, probably, probably, probably top one percent, two percent Hearthstone player. So he understands chess, I think, just innately a little bit. Um, but he's gotten really into chess and understanding the different setups and all those kinds of things. So he had a totally different experience watching the show than I think I would have. But uh, I've still heard it's very good and and very true to like chess as a sport, you know? Yeah, and I almost feel bad for those specialty sports like chess or whatever because you know I've got a history of playing poker and when i sit there and watch like a poker show i'm always sitting there like that's not how it is or that's yeah, not yeah, real yeah. <laughs> but not so it, it becomes a little bit like when someone can make an actual movie about what you're specializing in it's kind of like yep okay that's that's pretty good and like you said you're always going to have a different experience and you're like do you get to that point where you're like well it's good enough or man that was dope yeah yeah also, sorry, Ariel. I just uh, <laughs> just kind of dominated you and knocked you out there. Sorry. Oh, yeah. If I like sorry, ran into not. anyone but you, I would have survived. Actually, like I think I would have made it like pretty far. Like I would have been like second or third, but that's okay. <laughs> sorry. Now, Damn. <laughs> I'm, it was. I literally just needed one more Callista, and I would have had three star Callista, like fully. I man. That's oh right. wow. There's a lot of complaining coming from. <laughs> You're running duelist, Ariel. I did. Duelist got. Are you bugged. kidding? Duelist she got always bugged. runs duelist. You know that. Come on. <laughs> she has to switch it up, dog. Duelist uh, at her heart. It just everything I mean, fell into place. But you know what? I think like the nail. You always in the say coffin, that. Ariel, the nail in the coffin was the, col the cultist chosen Callista. 
I would love to talk to you yeah. about maybe joining our Equinox Esports Performance Center. <laughs> With different strategies. If, if DXN would give me uh, an hour lesson of TFT, like I'd be there. I'd be all for it. What about me giving you an hour lesson of TFT? Absolutely not. <laughs> no. Well, I mean. <laughs> okay, now if I wanted to play like Overwatch or Valorant or something like an FPS, like I would definitely take a lesson. Okay. Well, but hit not, me up. Not from you. No, oh. from Connor. Connor's pretty. Oh, he's smart. Oh, he's smart about the game, and like sometimes your intelligence is better than like your, you know, boomer APM. So. Yeah, I can't aim. I'll tell you that much. I I, I will say, chat. I'm doing. I do some coaching here at Equinox on the side, and um, not on the side at all. I mean, it's it's a part it's of what like we do. So I don't know why I said on the side. Part of his job. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. uh, I'm, it's I'm poor Bart right now. Revenue generator. Director of competition, everyone. <laughs> I feel like I understand a little bit about how, you know, there's some, like, like and I don't know, this is an NFL reference, not sure it's going to land, but, like, Andy Reid is an NFL head coach. He used to be, or I don't know if he's still coaching. Uh, uh, good. Yes, uh, he's still coaching the world championship. Oh, yeah, the Super Chiefs. Bowl champion, <laughs> Kansas City Chiefs. That's right. Well, you know, he was, he was so average for the I Eagles. Mean, you so. have the worst NFL knowledge if ever. Hey, me too, <laughs> dude. Harris, hey, guess what? Guy? We're esports, bro. Like, <laughs> Come on, dude. We're trying to bridge the gap that sports are and esports are. <laughs> like, I can't keep up with Andy Reid. That's, that's a big Come ass. Come on. I mean, the dude's not the the most you know the sexiest figure in sports. NFL coach of all time. Of all it, time? It, yeah. Of all time. What? Are I, you kidding me? How many he NFL average with the Eagles? Average. What? He went to four straight NFC Championship games. <sighs> I'm, I, I mean, you're probably. I'm not. I don't know if I want to get into a sports argument with Chad because I think probably I'm. Not. I think oh I'm just too far wrong. <laughs> like the guy is considered one of the greatest <laughs> offensive minds of all time. <laughs> Yeah, awkward. I mean, awkward chat. he's coaching what could end up being the greatest football player that ever lived. In, in Mahomes? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I yo, I knew that Mahomes. one. I knew that one. <laughs> he knew it. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea what you're talking about. I thought you meant Terry Kill. The billion dollar boy. Yeah. I, I mean, another one of them. We don't, yeah. like, he's an athlete, but he doesn't have the greatest past. I know, I know. How about you, boy? <laughs> um. I, I, yeah, I mean, I guess Andy Reid's a good coach. Yeah. A good coach? <laughs> I guess. I, I wish Scott was on this stream, you know. Obviously, uh, anybody that doesn't know Scotty G, uh, he dealt in um, traditional sports and baseball, and he was a director of baseball operations at Wichita State and an assistant coach at Wichita State. Like, just his mindset, like, he's coached at the highest level collegiately that you can do division one they're competing for uh you know baseball college world series championships and to hear you talk about a guy like literally i talk about this all the time like anybody that thinks oh that person's just a bad quarterback no they're one of the top there's only 32 starting quarterback jobs in the world you know for yeah, that's true. the nfl and it's like they are you, you talk about a 1%, 2% part stone player. I'm sitting there going, this guy is a top, like, minuscule. <laughs> like, there's only 32 in the world, That's and true. we're giving him crap. Yeah. And then we start talking about Andy Reid being like, oh, man, you know, he's okay, coach. Like, oh, <laughs> so, so wait, dude Chad. dude is amazing. <sighs> Chad, I, so uh, Puyan's in the chat, and he said, next thing I'm going to hear is that Mike Tomlin isn't impressive. Oh it my! Is overrated, God. overrated. <laughs> Mike, uh, the coaching job Mike Tomlin's done this year is Barna. He should be in the category for coach of the year this year. Wow! You know, okay. it, it, it is it's unbelievable. And Mike Tomlin, when the Steelers talked about like maybe getting rid of him two or three years ago, I guarantee you he had four job head coaching jobs lined up. Yeah, yeah. Chops to get him. <laughs> Well, I I didn't realize what path I was going down when I started to make this comparison. But what I was you what know I was, now, what I, you know yeah. now, what I was starting to say is I can relate to someone like an Andy Reid, like like a I don't, like a coach because I'm terrible at Valorant. Okay, there we but go. I think I understand how to play the game a little bit and understand some things about it. So that's the point I was trying to make is that. Okay. I think, you know, yeah, yeah. Because I don't think Andy Reid could go run a post route for 50 yards and score a touchdown. 
or something. I'll, but. I'll tell you right now, <laughs> probably design a play that gets him open. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's okay. I don't know. I don't know how we like got on. We got oh, on this man. path of like the NFL, like real deep. Like it, we're like real deep in this. It's the NFL cast today. Uh, you yeah. Know, thir- I'd love to have an NFL guy on. I mean, you guys realize how much gaming is a part of their life as well. Oh yeah. yeah. Sports, whatnot, and, and I guarantee you, there is probably some professional. Um, Football players that could probably be professional esports athletes, and um, oh, his name escapes me right now. But um, oh, Juju, former the huge gamer. Ben well, uh, there's a there's yeah. a former Basketball. running back that's now a, a coach. Um, oh gosh, ESPN oh, man. a feature on it. Um, but I'll he, do some, do some Wikipedia he teaches people on the preparation for um, esports being the same as that of the NFL. Wow, I like hmm. that. Demarcus is it uh, Amon Rashad Green? Yes. yes. Yeah, yep. Packers. Yep, Amon Green. I like that. Esports coach at Lakeland University. That's pretty cool. That's right. There you go. And it, nice. there's a lot of them that are taking that route because, I mean, as we talk about with esports athletes, like the mental preparation that you need to do, mm-hmm. hence why we built Performance Center, is it is the exact same as that you need if you're a professional basketball player, if you're a professional football player, if you're yeah. a professional chess player, professional, you know, poker player, whatever it is, like you need to mentally prepare because once you get to that that top echelon, uh, we've talked about it all the time, like the top 30 teams in the world, any team could beat anybody on any given day. It's all about mental preparation, like mm-hmm. your skill set. Yeah. There's just only so much you can do with your physical skills, whether it's your fast twitch muscle fibers moving in your fingers and all that good stuff. The other stuff is all is basically mental and everybody right. needs help with that. Yeah. A uh, refresh in the chat says you don't have to be the best player to be an amazing coach. And that's kind of the toxic thought that's going around in esports. And I completely agree with that. Very true. Yeah. Like there, there are so many like good coaches out there, you know, not only at the LCS level, I mean, I'm just using league as an example, because that's what I know the best. But like, even at the amateur level, there are actually some pretty decent coaches out there. But like, maybe they only peaked at like gold or platinum, like, yeah, competition wise. And so like, players are like disrespecting that and fans are disrespecting that. But like, you know, the role of the coach is to play the game, you know, like, they're the ones designing how They're you the, play designing the game. schematics and everything. Right. I mean, that's the, that's the big, not the big knock, excuse me, but you know, you, you look at someone like a Michael Jordan, if he were to go into coaching, you know, how hard it'd be for Michael Jordan to go into coaching. Cause he would be sitting there on the sidelines with like, you know, 30, 45 seconds left. And they're like, what do we do? And he goes, well, just do this. And everybody's sitting there looking at him and going, yeah, we're not you, bro. It's not like we, <laughs> we're not like we're the greatest of all time and can be able to relate to us mm-hmm. and take over a, you know, a, a mental game that needs to be done here. Like <laughs> we, we need help. We can't just do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, that's one of the things that I think esports is going to have to grow in and it's going to have to, I mean, you know, if you've ever seen the movie, like, like, like Moneyball is a great example of, of how people can come to approach a game from a different perspective and, and turn out, you know, a great, you know, great product at the end of the day. And, and yeah, so it's not just about everybody else is zagging. Like, yeah, hey, it, exactly. They'll come back to you at some point, you know? Yep. All right. Yep, yep, yep. It is time to take a little break. We'll probably be back here in about five minutes. We're going to hydrate or dehydrate. So we don't want to mm-hmm. dehydrate. So we hydrate. Um, but yeah, we'll be right back and we are going to talk about some, uh, esports news. So don't go anywhere. See you.
Are we back, chat? Hello. Welcome back to Knox Talks, our weekly stream here at Equinox Esports, where we chat a little bit about uh, Equinox and our plans for the future, as well as um, esports highlights and news, uh, which we like to do at the second segment, which is happening now. So welcome if you're just tuning in. Uh, thank you for sticking around if you've been in chat the entire time. Uh, we super appreciate you. Um, just a little quick review of what happened the past hour. We played some TFT. Uh, I, of course, lost. I got fifth place, but Connor here got first. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so congratulations, Woo Connor, uh, on your ranked TFT victory. Thank you. Big moment. You know, I, I just I have a lot of people to thank. Yeah, uh, go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I really want to thank. Um, I want to thank Scotty G twenty one. Yeah, yeah. Um, for his you know uh, inspiration. And uh, then I want to thank Reggie Wayne for being a, a, a really good just Colts wide receiver ambassador from the early 2000s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peyton Manning, you know, my idol. Uh, yeah, him too. All that good stuff. And then, um, <laughs> oh gosh, what what the, the coach guy you guys were just talking about? Andy Reid. Andy, Andy Reid. Shout, yep. out, shout out to Andy Reid. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, so guys, Amazing. we, we talked a little bit about, uh, Equinox's plans for the new year. We got a lot of stuff, uh, fun stuff coming out content wise. We're also in a few competitions coming up here, uh, next week, as well as early January for the Valorant team. Um, we also talked a little bit about the Smashcade acquisition. So, um, for those of you who don't know, Smashcade is a local tournament scene for super smash brothers ultimate here in oklahoma and so we acquired austin and his uh his brand smashcade brought them onto the team under the equinox banner uh everything's going to be powered the same as it was just uh beefed up with some cool equinox resources we have a pre-show that we're going to throw in at the beginning um and then you'll get to see your like the same great smash competition um from players all around the North America because we had moved online because of COVID. But um, in the future, we will have in-person events as well. But we do we do like our online um, our yeah. online tournament because you know it, we get to we get to have players from all over the United States play. So absolutely, no doubt. It's a it's a catch twenty two. It's it's it one is. that you know we're, we we have some exciting plans in the future mm -hmm. to host those events at a you know um, and. Uh, so that's going to be amazing. But yeah, we're going to miss our online community as well that we've, we've built. Um, right. Definitely don't take it for granted. For sure. Um, cool. Okay, Connor, let's go ahead and jump into some of these esports highlights we have pulled up. So I think Woo. first thing, you know, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about First Strike. Absolutely. This, this I would say, is my, my kind of biggest esports highlight of the week. Uh, also extremely biased because I am a part of an organization that has a, a Valorant team. But still... Um, let's talk before we talk about the results, let's talk viewership. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, we've got a chart we might pull up, but, um, essentially, you know, we have, uh, some pretty solid viewership from the finals. Um, you know, the final day was peak viewership of 300,000, which is the, the highest for a Valorant event to date. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a lot of other good matches getting, getting viewership though obviously whenever 100 thieves play people like to tune in um tsm and envy get some really good viewership as long as as well as the sentinels matches there um you know but a lot of hours watched a lot of average viewers as well on those um actually just i mean just really high average viewership yeah. uh for context for the you know I, I know this isn't picking from the exact same fan base but the overwatch league grand finals this last year while it had a total viewership of about uh 1.5 million it only peaked at 180,000. Wow. So I don't know if we have what total viewership uh the Valorant one got. I don't think it's going to be quite 1.5 million because this is the North American um you know finals whereas Overwatch League is a very global esport uh particularly reaching a lot of fans in China. Mm -hmm. Um so, you know, but it's still an impressive metric that it, it we nearly doubled the Overwatch League's grand finals and essentially what's a, a pre-season, a pre-esport tournament uh, for Valorant. So that's that's really cool to see. Um, but um, otherwise, looking at kind of the matches themselves, I mean, you can, you can see here a lot of the prominent matches. Um, 100 Thieves do end up winning over TSM that was actually um, in... 
in such a yeah such a good series oh my gosh and um, i think they were kind of i wouldn't say like they were the underdog coming in because i think there were teams that were a little lesser than 100 thieves but i think so yeah. many people had envy winning the entire thing yeah most analysts i saw had some combination of tsm envy and sentinels mm -hmm. those were kind of everyone's three right. um three main ones going in um i i watched some some post analysis of the TSM Envy game. Apparently, Envy in scrims is usually, you know, the scrim buck stock exchange is always a dangerous thing. But apparently, Envy in scrims is usually just very tough to deal with, and, and we're we're kind of uh, we're kind of dominating TSM. And right. it seems like some different Envy team came to play um, in that matchup. So um, that one, I think, su that surprised me. I thought that one would be a lot closer at the very least. I picked Envy last week on the show. I think. You did, um, yes. Yeah, and... Uh, hey, it's okay. So I, pi I picked T1. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I picked T1. I was going... Now, they were the underdog, for sure. Like, that was a team, like, I don't think no one expected to really make it too far, so... Yeah, good pieces on that team, but uh, Hiko has described it pretty well, I think, that they either come to play or they don't. There's no happy medium of, of T1 right now. Right. They're either on or they're off. Um but I think, you know, 100 Thieves prove a lot here. I think that, you know, Hiko had the opportunity to build a roster with this team once. They had a pretty bad showing. Mm -hmm. um, 100 Thieves worked with him again to kind of keep him, retool the other four members. They pick up Nitro and some other really big names. Um, they're also the only team that played on LAN, to my knowledge, that played together in LA. Um, I know for different, like, other teams of boot camps, like Renegades, um, I think... Oh, I don't know if TSM or Envy have, but I know a few other teams have, have boot camped, but they played together mm -hmm. and they dominated. Like they looked really, really strong. Um, so I, I think that's that's a big statement piece. Um, and also, again, just more advocating to to once we can get through COVID and all play together, how it's going to really unlock the potential of a lot of these teams. Oh, for sure. And like I was talking to Cute Fat Boy, one of our Valorant players, actually literally yesterday, and we were talking about. Um, just like competition in general and he he was a really big advocate advocator for land matches as well and you know he was just like not only is it putting people on a, a like a level playing field but for him it brings so much more uh like adrenaline and pressure onto him and it yeah. makes him perform better because he's like sitting there in person like seeing these people that he's competing against and he's like the thing that's like running through my mind is like i just want to dominate them like i want to beat them and seeing them in front of me is a huge motivator for that as well yeah and that's so much of what i think can be you know when you're in this grind of playing remotely i say i think overwatch league had, had this problem big time last season was you know, you're just playing from home and practicing at home day in and day out and it's hard to find that fire that motivation like as a competitor Can't like be. you know wanting to beat the other team is a big motivator oftentimes i think q fat boy makes a great point um so yeah it's very tricky to figure out what to do in that situation so um, but in any case, that's that's kind of, you know, first strike was great. I think it's a good sign of things to come. It was the first event that Riot produced. We got some cool uh, overlays, some cool UI. Mm -hmm. A lot of just, you know, the talent was amazing. Um, Riv, uh, DDK, uh, Sean Gares, um, Dash, Jordan Fisher, like so many people were a part of that broadcast that were really, really amazing and did a phenomenal job. So sure. uh, shout out to them. Yeah, no, and it was really cool as a League of Legends fan to see Riven Dash, like, in a different element, um, because I've yeah. only seen them doing League stuff, and Dash, like, over the past year has really been building his brand in other areas, whether it's through Vin or other content creation, but um, to see them in Valorant and see them talk about another game was strange, but it was also, like, comforting as well, like, as a League player. Um, because I just, yeah. like, I can attest to Dash and Riv's quality. So seeing them on the desk was great. And then also, I think this is a great, great for Riot in general, but also great for the state of first person shooters in North America, because here in NA, like CSGO doesn't have the foothold that it has in Europe. Right. So that kind of leaves the door open for first person shooters here in the United States. And I think uh, Valorant made a really strong, impressive showing with First Strike. And then now the announcing the championship series and the Masters yeah. stuff coming in the next year. I think Riot's in a pretty unique position to like 
solidify not only are they the best MOBA in the United States, but now they can try to solidify that they're the best first person shooter in the United States. Yeah, that's that's an extremely extremely powerful place to be and so uh excited to see what they can do with it though i think i think a lot of us here have a lot of faith in riot so very excited to see that what the future holds for this esport um but yeah what do you what do you got going on Eric? what are your highlights okay i got a couple okay so um one of the most fun events to watch uh every year in the league of legends space uh, if i have any league fans out there um the all-star event so all stars is a, a little global phenomenon where we bring out the best of the best from each region uh the community gets to vote on who we see playing on the teams um they've done a couple of different format changes uh there's some like underdog uprising and super superstar showdown so these are new um so this is coming up uh december 18th which is next friday so a lot of the head-to-head matches between the neighboring regions. So that's that's like new. That's interesting. So these like top, the top regions for League of Legends are going against the smaller regions. Uh, so I think that's kind of a cool and unique way to highlight um, the smaller regions in League of Legends is to pit them against uh, the pros and the best of the best and the more you know. The regions that get the most news coverage, let's say, um, have the bigger fan base. So that will be really cool. I, you know, CB LOL. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually interested to see what they bring uh, against the LCS. So yeah. That, one, that one's fun. Um, I really am just like really digging this like graphic right here. God, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was like, literally about to say their aesthetic for this is yeah. like fantastic. I love this style. Yeah, this is a this is a different marketing than we've seen in past years. So this is fun. Um, really cool, yeah. It's very LEC esque. I feel like the LEC is kind of like a a pioneer in, really in their are. like color scheme and their their whole branding. And this is really cool looking though. It's like yeah. cyberpunk. Yeah, no, LEC like definitely all about the the European leagues for you know people. If you're not familiar with uh, League of Legends, they they're very like forward thinking and progressive and experimental with uh their marketing tactics so um it's kind of cool to see it trickle up to the global level uh to the global esports team who uh plans all of worlds and um msi all stars all that so check it out it's pretty fun um if you're looking for like prime time competition, it's not. This isn't like the best of the best. Obviously, that's worlds. Like this, this is sure. this is for fun. This is to bring more eyes to the scene and bring more eyes to the smaller regions as well. So, check it out. Okay, 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 guys. So everyone knows. Well, maybe you don't know. If not, I'm about to tell you. Uh, the game awards are tonight at 6 p.m. CST. So you guys should definitely tune in for that. Game Awards. Game Awards. Nintendo has announced that they are going to drop the next Super Smash Brothers Ultimate DLC fighter tonight at the Game Awards. So, who do we think it's going to be? Chat, let, let us know what you think. Yes. Um, I have some thoughts. Um, so... This might be a, a dying, you know, a candle that's that's being burnt out sure. and that is is maybe on its last, you know, its last flicker. But I'd love to see Tracer, Winston, or an Overwatch character in Smash. Okay. Granted, it would make more sense near the announcement of Overwatch Two, and sure. I, I fully understand that Overwatch <laughs> has kind of fallen out of the 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 front of most people's minds. I'm I'm aware, but, um, yeah, I. Uh, I think those would be cool. I think a uh, another realistic option was on the screen in the header image, and that would be Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, I think he has a really uh, a good possibility. He's just you know one of those characters that I think when you think of Smash characters, you think of kind of quintessential characters that yes you know resonate with ple- that with people that are kind of like a you know the zeitgeist of their either game or even of the, the of those years of classic gaming. Mm-hmm. And Crash Bandicoot is for sure one of those. I, I um, could definitely see Crash. Yeah, and like, and yeah, uh, Halo, Halo Master Chief could be one for sure. Um, that would be it, something. It, it'd be wild. That would It'd be, be a, wild if we saw that happen. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Otherwise, for a Fortnite character probably that could be one. Um, yeah. That's yeah, like that's, that's such a different direction though, because Fortnite is is oh man, you just you just went over something I really think. Uh, anyway, we'll talk about Fortnite first. Fortnite. Yeah. Uh, like that, you talk about like a zeitgeist kind of character. It's like capturing the essence of something. Fortnite is that for the modern gamer, like for the, the kid growing up in the last this 10 is years, true. This is true. that's it. Like, so like, yes, Fortnite might not be the game it was in popularity wise. It's still an absolute force though. So true. there's no doubt that could be one. The bottom option, though, that you were on the screen is Waluigi, and yes! oh my gosh, will it ever happen? Give me I don't Waluigi know. or give me death. Like, I have wanted this character in Smash forever. Forever? <laughs> For literal ever. Why is he not there? Waluigi, okay, so maybe I'm biased because I cosplayed Waluigi last year um, <laughs> and, like, went on this little Mario Kart extravaganza for a friend's birthday, but, like, he he is, like, the most neglected, like, Mario character to date. I'm just saying. Yeah. Why not? Why is he not? A, you? We have Wario. We have Bowser. I know. Like, hello? Waluigi's... He, whatever. I heard, a, I heard a counter argument that was a hot take on Twitter oh. that I, I disagree with, but I'm going to... I'll let you know what it is. Okay. So, okay. I, I think... Waluigi, this person was saying that he was basically created to be Wario's tennis partner in the old N64 Mario game, Mario yes. Tennis game. Okay. That was essentially why he was brought into the Mario universe. Mm -hmm. And so what, what this person's arguing is that characters in Smash Bros. are often like the centerpieces of their games or their, their, their characters you think of when you think of like I don't know, like they, they have their own de you know definite identity. Yes. And Waluigi has never had his own game. That's true. Like Wario's had some games. Yeah. Uh, Luigi's had Luigi's Mansion. Yeah. Obviously, all the other ones do. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's their argument. But in the same way, like okay, Peach and Daisy have never had their own exactly. games. Exactly. What are they? Like, Who's is, even Daisy? Come on. Okay, I don't remember Daisy, but again, I played like Super Mario Brothers World, like on the Super Just Nintendo. But Burnett. Still Sister Peach, I don't know what she is either. Luigi's Which love interest, like up. I don't know. Exactly, and and even then, what if Mario and Peach like that would never work? Yeah, yeah. Piranha Plant. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There, there's so many you could do to to counter that argument. Yes. So I see what the person was saying, but I saw that take and I was like, huh. I wonder if that's Nintendo's logic, but I don't know. It yeah. seems kind of faulty and consistent. So. Uh, person who made that take if you're watching sorry to put you on blast uh, i don't think you are but uh there you go probably not um i will say like smash does have a tendency to like pull towards this more like anime style character i feel like we have so many fire emblem characters so i think Rain yeah. and all would be like they, they would be likely picks as well um, but I th I think D someone said it earlier chat. No, Ninja said it earlier chat. Doom guy would be a good one. Like with Doom coming out, like yeah, that was such a good impactful game. Like that would be that would be a great option. And I I no kind doubt. of agree with Ninja as well. Like I feel like if Smash should have picked a Fortnite character earlier if they're going to do a Fortnite character. Yeah. Because it would have made more sense. It is kind of on the decline. And then Sora also, I think they would have done Sora earlier if they, you know, wanted to capitalize on the marketing and the timing of things. Um mm -hmm. Kingdom Hearts three. I, I just don't see it happening. So we'll find right, out so tonight. Let's, let's give our official predictions, Ariel. Yes. Uh yeah. if you had to officially say one character that you think, what do you think it's gonna be? Logically, I pick Doom Guy. But aspirationally, I pick Waluigi. Okay, I'll do. I'll do the same then. I, I'm going to say logically, I'm going to go Crash Bandicoot. Okay. Aspirationally, Among Us person. <laughs> One of the little guys. Oh my god, that would actually. <laughs> One of the be little hilarious. guys from Among Us. That would be hilarious because honestly, yeah. and here's the thing about Among Us: like that was a game that I did not think was going to stick around. I thought it was going to be kind of like Fall Guys, where it was like hot for a month and then it just dies. People are still playing Among Us. They have turned it into this, like, role-playing scene as well where you, like, become your character and you're, like, actually, like, 
assign a personality and like your name to that character and you, they like people actually role play out the scenarios which is crazy yep. it's like kind of like yep. the phenomenon like in gta 5 yep so I, I i love it i think it's you know i think it's a great game i don't i i it would be an ultra long shot for smash but um you know if smash is trying to do something that's that's relevant and kind of like have their characters reflect where the gaming trends are, you know, you know, month to month or year to year. That's a great game to kind of get the, I've, I've used the word zeitgeist too many times for one stream, but it's kind of, <laughs> that, that's a game that really yeah. captures a lot of 2020. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I only have one more thing to talk about. Uh, so okay. if, if you have anything else, let me know. But uh, really wanted to dive deeper into our acquisition of uh, smash Gate. So, yeah. Smashcade, what does that mean for Equinox? Well, for us, this is a deeper connection to the local, uh, not only just Oklahoma City, but like Oklahoma as a whole, that, that gaming community that um, kind of can go under the radar if you're not in that niche. Like, so that, that's kind of the unique thing about fighting games. It's like, if you're not in that community, you don't really know what's going on. Like yeah. the publicity of it and like just like the news mill and rumor mill stuff. It, it's so very niche that it makes it unique. So I think what that means for Equinox as we acquire Smashcade and power uh, all the Smashcades here on out. Like, again, it, it's it's a connection to a scene. I don't think anyone was expecting us to jump into like a fighting game community like you know, we yeah. we kind of made our splash and jumped like straight into Valorant, like a Riot Games title. I think people are probably expecting, you know, maybe a Rocket League or maybe a League of Legends, maybe even Overwatch or Call of Duty. Um, so it was really cool to kind of make this unique splash by jumping into Smashcade. Um, so we acquired Smashcade a few, actually a couple months ago. Um, but we officially wanted to bring it to light uh, this month so we could host uh, the December Smashcade here in the Equinox Performance Center. Uh, we're going to, we have a really cool pre-show like thought and planned out for you guys. Um, hopefully it's going to bring some uh, smiles and laughs and memes maybe <laughs> to <laughs> uh, basically like leading up into the stream and into, I believe the top eight, I think we're going to start streaming the top eight. Yeah. It's something like that. It's, 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 it might, it might be a little bit before top eight. It might be like okay. top 16, top 32, okay. but I think maybe, yeah, maybe 16. Yeah. But yeah, like, like you're saying here, the whole goal is like, the whole goal is to elevate something that already exists and already has kind of the community support. It's really, it's at its core, it's to give back. Right. Um, For sure. You know, one of the things and one of the core reasons we we went with Smash Cave, we talked about it earlier on stream, but it's because Oklahomans play Smash and it's a, it's a scene that's, that's prominent here in the state. It is. It's also because we have someone on staff, uh, Austin Hogue. I think I'm saying your last name right, dude. Hopefully. You are. Um, who is the founder of Smash Cave, kind of inceptualized the idea. And he helps run our productions and does a lot of kind of the, the back end tech stuff here at the office. But Austin worked really hard before coming on to Equinox to build this community the right way and essentially was a part of the community he himself was building up. And that's that's essentially what we want to continue to build off of. We don't want to uh, tamper with the things that are good about Smashcade, you know, the yep. people that have kind of the grassroots energy that it does have. But we also want to give it support that, you know, an org can can bring to a tournament organizer like like a smash cage so right. um we're we're really excited we couldn't have done it with without austin without the community i mean his quote on the website says i think a really good a really good sentiment that you know we basically we couldn't have done it without you and it's thanks to you as a community uh that we have this so um i'm i'm very excited for smash Cade. i you know i i've i played i've played two games competitively in my life and one was Pokemon VGC, and the other was Smash Melee way back in the day. I okay. uh, went to a couple tournaments locally for that way back. And like, whew, oh, man, whenever the game was out, like it was newly out. So a long time ago. Right. So um, I always have a special place in my heart for Smash, and I'm really excited to represent it as Equinox. So, yeah. yeah. For sure. And I don't have as much Smash knowledge aside from... Um, 
back when I was working at UCO and I was also the uh, esports advisor for the esports club at UCO, uh, just my smash kids in general, just what they would tell me. And I, I would go to their tournaments and just kind of watch and like, it is such a community driven game, like more so than probably any other game that I could think of. Yeah. Like, like league is it, league is kind of community driven, but there's like established ways of doing things that you know we've pulled from, you know the LCS and you know Academy and therefore. But like Smash, it, it it's just such a unique experience to like go there in person and see, you know sometimes like you could have just Joey down the street competing against Hungry Box or something like. It, it's just really cool the like inner interconnectivity of the Smash community um, and fighting game community in general. Um, so yeah, I yeah. love it. I love the grassroots energy. I love the community feel, and uh, I think it's a perfect fit for Equinox. Yeah, I totally agree. So that um, is is kind of that's going to round out our 2022. Um, yeah. So for the, I mean, for those that don't know, like this, this all really got started back in in March of this year, and then we we kind of really that was when the idea kind of came to mind, and then the fire was really lit in October, and we've been really working since then as as a full team. Um, but we have a lot of really cool things on the radar for 2021, mm-hmm. and especially beyond that, um, with Valorant, with Smash, with just the local community, with some things that we haven't announced yet. So. Um, if you're a fan of Equinox or if you're, if you're just kind of becoming, you know, someone who knows about the org, definitely, uh, definitely stay tuned and and keep track of what we've got going on next year. It's going to be a good year, I think. So for sure. And okay, Connor, I just want to get your thoughts. So previewing the smash Cade pre-show, the pre -pre pre-show, if you will, um, I think we're going to dive into a couple of interesting questions surrounding uh, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you guys want to uh, make sure you tune into the pre-show because we're going to ask some, um, you know, maybe some like cheese or trash kind of questions. So mm. yeah, we want to get, we want to get your insights. Leaks, 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 leaks. Yeah. I mean, um, there's going to be some spice. All, that's all I know. I know that right. Scott and I are going to duke it out and some some arguments. Um, <laughs> and I know I, that... I get to have crowned the victor and assign points. So it's, <laughs> you know, totally whatever I want to do. So. Yep. Yep. Ariel decides <laughs> the points. So we're really pandering to Ariel in our answers. But uh, I know Scott and I can definitely argue, and you know, I'm probably going to impersonate him at some point during the show. There's going to be some mockery. Sure, Definitely sure. not one to miss, but uh, I'm 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 excited about these questions. Actually, there's some really there's some big topics in this that we're going to go over, and you know we might not give them the the justice they deserve as topics, but it'll, I think it'll be interesting for fans to hear uh, some different takes on these funny. things. Um, oh yeah. So yeah. So if you guys want to head over to the Smash GG website, uh, anyone can enter this tournament. By the way, it's completely free. Um, Two hundred and fifty dollar prize pool. So if you're interested in competing online in Smashcade, register now. Um, hopefully you make your way through the top 16 and we're able to shoutcast you live on stream. So Whoa. another cool little leak If uh, for those of you in chat. Um, I hear we have a pretty prominent Smash uh, community member here in Oklahoma. Maybe one hmm. that uh, has kind of been retired a little bit. He may be uh, joining the stream. Maybe one that was in chat actually earlier. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. And and me, but I'm not. <laughs> and Connor. I'm not. You know, anything to get excited about. <laughs> Connor. Connor will be one of our shoutcasters, which is going to be really fun because you know we get to we get to talk with Connor and Scott on the pre-show, and then like see Connor transition into a more you know serious shoutcaster you know flavor role for the rest of the tournament so it'll be fun it'll be a lot of fun this is uh you know i've i've cast a few other games and and smash is is one that i i have some exposure to but um excited to see it in a in a live you know exciting tournament kind of environment so it'll be it'll be it'll be really cool very excited (laughs) okay i mean with that i think i think we're done with nox talks for the week let's do it yeah 
Okay, so chat, thank you once again for sticking around through the entirety of the show. Uh, thanks for tuning in to Knox Talks. Again, this is our weekly show here at Equinox, uh, powered out of our streaming room in the Performance Center. Uh, we play games, we chat about esports, we chat about Equinox, we chat about, you know, Oklahoma City and the modern frontier and, you know, esports' growth here in the Midwest. Um, if you ever have a suggestion or a topic that you want us to talk about, Drop us a message in chat. Drop us a message on Twitter, on the website, Discord, or you can email us at info at equinox.team and we'll get back to you about it because we love to hear what you guys have to say and uh, we want to talk about things that are relevant to you uh, as well as relevant uh, in the scene. So Absolutely. Yeah. My kind of, I'll part with with this and then I'll let you sign us off, Ariel. Uh, I, uh, I, I don't know. I, there's been, there's just been, you know, moments this year for a lot of people that have that have been hard, um, you know, whether it's it's tough results competitively, whether it's, I mean, a variety of different things, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think that it, really in life we're going to progress without struggle, without any kind of resistance. Um, it's not to say that we should seek out that struggle by any means, but it's just that when it does happen, those do give us opportunities to grow if we're looking for silver linings. So. Um, I think, you know, embrace those moments. You know, it's kind of like the, the sun's brighter after it's rained kind of idea. Um, and also just, you know, continue to, to focus on self-awareness and, 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 you know, know who you are. It's something that we've had a lot of time, people at home to think this year and, mm-hmm. um, you know, use that time and that introspection to, to grow and, and 2021 is a new year. So true. that's my, that's my words of wisdom to end the stream from me. I like that. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of what you just said, like, relates to the uh, kind of like our motto that we adopted here at Equinox when we first decided to launch. And that was to, you know, seize the night and then embrace the day. So uh, you can't ever have balance. You know, you can't have the day without the night. You can't have the night without the day. So, you know, taking stock of a lot of those, you know, negative experiences and turning them into something positive that uh, you can grow from. So... Every experience is a learning experience. So I like that a lot. So again, thanks for hanging out with us, guys. You know, just make sure you tell someone you love them today. And uh, that's it. Stay safe out there. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. Cool. Bye.